For a long time, imagining humans walking on Mars felt like nothing more than a distant dream, something straight out of science fiction. But that vision has started to shift. With the rapid advancement of space technology, decreasing launch costs, the constant deployment of robotic explorers to study the Martian surface, and the growing interest of billionaires determined to leave their mark beyond Earth, the Red Planet has never seemed so close to becoming our next big destination. However, turning that ambition into reality is a massive challenge. The journey requires far more than just courage. It demands technology capable of ensuring survival during the trip, systems that can guarantee a safe landing, and the ability to keep astronauts alive in a completely hostile environment. And of course, bring them all back safely. Colonizing Mars means facing colossal obstacles. Starting with the distance, about 225 million kilometers separate our planet from its red neighbor. This means that any resupply mission would take months to arrive, making emergency operations nearly impossible. Radio communication would also be affected. A simple message sent from Earth could take anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes to reach Mars, depending on the relative positions of the planets in their orbits. This delay would prevent quick responses and require astronauts to be highly autonomous. In other words, the old approach of relying on Earth to solve every problem just wouldn't work out there. On top of that, Mars's environment is extremely hostile to life as we know it. The temperatures are brutally low. In summer, they might reach minus 20 degrees Celsius, but in the winter at the poles, they can plummet to minus 125 degrees Celsius. That's not even counting the dust storms, massive phenomena that, every five or six Earth years, blanket the entire planet for weeks or even months, darkening the sky and compromising solar power systems. If we ever manage to overcome all these obstacles and set foot on Mars, it will be one of the greatest achievements in human history. Another critical obstacle in colonizing Mars is the absence of a magnetic field. Unlike Earth, which has a protective shield against charged solar particles and cosmic rays, Mars is fully exposed to space radiation. This becomes even more concerning during periods of high solar activity. A recent and striking example happened in May 2024. A colossal sunspot triggered an intense geomagnetic storm that reached Earth. Just a few days later, Mars was also hit, only with even more dramatic consequences. On May 20, 2024, the Solar Orbiter probe recorded a massive solar flare, estimated to be a Class X-12, the most powerful type on the solar flare scale. This explosion was followed by a coronal mass ejection, or CME, hurling a gigantic cloud of superheated plasma at millions of kilometers per hour toward Mars. The response to this event was immediate. Several robotic missions operating on the planet, including NASA's MAVEN orbiter, Mars Odyssey, and the Curiosity rover, began collecting valuable data to help scientists understand how Mars reacts to solar storms, and more importantly, how we might protect future astronauts from similar events. As expected, the Martian atmosphere was inflated and heated by the energy from the eruption. The plasma ejection triggered auroras, but not the kind we see here on Earth. Our planet has a magnetic field that redirects solar particles toward the poles, creating the famous northern and southern lights. Mars, however, without that protective shield, gets hit directly by the particles, and the auroras spread across the entire planet without a defined direction. One of the most important instruments during this observation was the RAD, a radiation detector on board the Curiosity rover. It can measure the most energetic radiation reaching the Martian surface. And even though auroras are typically caused by less energetic particles, the RAD played a key role in revealing the storm's direct impact on the ground. In the words of the scientists, Wave after wave of solar particles bombarded Mars over the past few weeks, and the RAD was able to record every bit of it. The data they collected was astonishing. The amount of radiation absorbed during that period was equivalent to about 30 chest X-rays. If an astronaut had been standing next to Curiosity at the time, that's the level of exposure they would have received. It was the highest radiation spike ever recorded during Curiosity's 12-year mission on Mars. To visualize the impact of the storm, just take a look at the images captured by one of the rover's navigation cameras. White spots, similar to snowflakes, appeared in the pictures due to charged particles striking the camera sensor directly. But Curiosity wasn't the only one affected. The Mars Odyssey orbiter also had its share of trouble. The energetic particles that hit the spacecraft in orbit 
were strong enough to temporarily disable its star camera, which is used for orientation and navigation. Even so, Odyssey managed to continue its mission and gathered valuable data on cosmic rays and energetic particles, thanks to its high-energy neutron detector. And believe it or not, these storms aren't just visible through electronic instruments. Humans can actually see the effects of radiation. When Curiosity's onboard camera sensors captured those white spots, the phenomenon was very similar to what astronauts report during solar storms in space. Those who've experienced it on the International Space Station often describe seeing fireworks when they close their eyes. That happens because high-energy particles pass through the retina and create a false visual signal, like a sudden flash of light. Although scientists assured that this level of radiation wouldn't be fatal to humans, it definitely poses a health risk and reinforces the importance of developing effective protection systems. This data is crucial to help us plan how to keep future Martian explorers safe during extreme solar events. One of the most discussed ideas is to build habitats inside lava tubes or natural caves, formations that exist on Mars and could serve as a barrier against radiation. In Martian orbit or deep space, however, exposure would be much greater, requiring even more robust solutions. Beyond the concern for astronauts, another critical issue is food cultivation. Intense solar radiation can make local agriculture extremely difficult, or even impossible. Growing plants on Mars is already a huge challenge due to the low atmospheric pressure, cold temperatures, and lack of nutrients. With the constant threat of solar storms, the situation becomes even more complicated. While it's possible to use artificial light in protected environments like tunnels or caves, those spaces are limited, and providing the right amount of energy and room for large-scale farming remains a problem with no definitive solution. Unlike Earth, where the dense atmosphere blocks much of the radiation, Mars has such a thin atmosphere that energetic particles easily reach the surface. Even outside of major storms, there's a sort of constant drizzle of radiation falling on the Martian ground. It's an invisible but persistent effect that highlights just how hostile Mars is to human life. Despite all the research, testing, and simulations conducted so far, the truth is we'll only really know the full impact of a manned mission once it actually happens. Much of what we know is based on predictions and models. And as space exploration history has already shown us, reality can differ quite a bit from theory, for better or for worse. So, what do you think? Is it worth sending humans to such a challenging planet? Do you believe it's truly possible to live there even with all these threats? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, send it to a friend who also loves astronomy and the universe. And don't forget to leave a like, it really helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next journey.